Welcome on in to the second week of Mo Shave, No Shave, November, No Shave November, where we're going to give you tips, tricks, and all sorts of fun ideas, products, and everything in between to get you beard growers through November. So if this is your first time here, this is a series that we're doing. And last week we talked about being patient with your beard, putting the razors down, don't trim, let it grow, being patient with it, and using beard oil. In this video today, we're going to talk about washing your beard, how you should wash it, and how to get the best growth processes out of your beard starting in week two. So we're going to do that right after this. So you may be asking yourself, Tyson, Mr. Faithfully Bearded, Tyson, why is your beard in a ponytail? And I'm going to answer that right now. My beard is in a ponytail because last week we talked about embracing the awkward stages. I am in an awkward stage. So I thought, why not just put it up in a ponytail, embrace it, and show you guys going on camera, going on a a live video for the world to see that I'm not afraid that my beard might look a little funny whether it's in a ponytail or not and I'm gonna embrace that do this video for you so if you think that's cool go ahead and give this a thumbs up subscribe and join us on this journey that is no shave Movember if you didn't see week one go go back and watch that it talks all about beard oil talks about patience and not trimming this week I'm gonna talk about things that you can do internally to build that strong foundation for your beard hair, and then things you can do externally to help keep your hair at its best. So we're gonna start with talking about foundation. Everything is built on a foundation. So when you go build a shed, and if you put it on a styrofoam foundation, over time, that's gonna pr produce a weaker stability shed, correct? Now, we build that foundation on cement that shed is going to hold up a lot longer over time you might ask yourself where are you going with this where are you going with this well much like everything else in your body your beard hair strength growth time that it takes to grow all starts internally so we want to make sure that we're drinking plenty of water i don't have a recommended dosage i think it's different for everybody else and i'm not a doctor i think everybody should be striving to drink as much water as they can every day Maybe not put down the coffee, maybe not put down the soda, or whatever else you drink. I'm not here to tell you to drink healthy because soda's bad for you. What I'm here to do is say, your beard is going to grow better staying hydrated with water. Your body needs water, your hair needs water to grow, to be thick and healthy. So maybe every time you have a, a thing of coffee, just have a thing of water too. I strive for a gallon a day, I don't hit it every day, and I'm not going to beat myself up about it. Drink as much water as you can. Anytime you have a different type of drink, make sure you replace with a cup of water. The next part would be your diet. Again, I'm not a doctor. I'm not telling you to eat healthy. I'm not telling you uh, what to eat, what not to eat. But it is a fact your hair can grow better with more protein in your system. So maybe instead of having that late night jello or ice cream, you get something a little bit better like peanuts, almonds, something along those lines. Uh, replace your dinner, your spaghetti, with a steak for dinner. Something along those lines where you're still just eating good, but you're getting more protein in your diet. You're getting more biotin, uh, which is going to help your hair uh, grow as well. So now we're starting to build a foundation from the inside to promote the best hair growth that we can promote, right? The second part of that comes to the external side of things. And when you're thinking about externally, you're thinking about touching your beard. You're thinking about washing your beard, conditioning your beard, and then the products that you put in your beard throughout the day. So I kind of want to start with the foundation of it. We talked last week about beard oil. Today we're talking about washing. And there's a few different ways you can wash your beard, and then some ways that you should not. First of all, let's get the ways you should not out of here, okay? We don't want to talk about ways that we don't want to wash our beards, but do not use the same shampoo on your head. Don't go to Walmart or Target, buy some Suave. Uh, some cheap stuff, and use it on your beard. Our beard hair, our facial hair, is completely different than the hair on the top of our head. And there's many different reasons behind that, and we're not going to get into that today. Just take my advice and my word for it that you need to wash 
meant for your beard, a conditioner also called co-wash for your beard as well. So a couple that I want to talk about today are you can go with something uh, like pine tar, something that's really going to strip out the waxes, the oils, and everything from your beard hair all the way down to your skin and give you a clean slate. This is something that I don't recommend doing every single day. Unless you work in a really dusty, dirty environment, you could wash every day. But when you're stripping out everything, your hair needs those oils. And a lot of this stuff can help protect your beard. You don't need to wash it out every day. So if you're going to use something really stripping like a pine tar soap, and here I just have one from Honest Ape. It's a bar. It's a bar soap right here. And it's a pine tar soap. This is going to strip your beard completely down. Strip all the oils out of it all the way down to your skin. Now with that, you're going to have to replace them, right? So you want to follow up with a conditioning agent, a conditioner. We're used to hearing conditioners in the beard world. We call them a co-wash because you can co-wash your beard. So this goes with a stripping uh, wash. And here I have just a big co-wash here from, again, Honest Ape here. And I like this particular one. It's one of the better ones in my mind for co-wash. And this is something that after you wash with the pine tar soap, you rinse it out. Then you go in with this, you put a little dime size uh, blob in your hand, you rub it up and massage it up in your beard. While you're doing that, you get the fingertips in there and really massage your, your skin underneath the beard. And then you let it sit in the shower while you're doing everything else and you rinse it out right at the end. It's going to leave your beard feeling nice and soft, feeling good, take those snarls out of it. Then there is a wash that you could use on a daily basis that is not so harsh. It's not going to strip it all the way down. It's going to clean it but leave some of those oils in there. And something like that would be what I call all-in-ones, and they're becoming more popular. Maybe people call them two-in-one. And it's something that's not as harsh. So here I have one from Barden. And this wash isn't uh, nearly as harsh. I can use this every day if I wanted to. And it's going to clean the beard and feel it, leave it nice and soft. Um, when you use these daily ones, I would recommend you know once a week, once every other week to do a deep moisturizing wash with a, a particular just co-wash. When you have an everyday wash, they make them in some liquid ones like that. You can just wash everything down. I use it on my face as well. Uh, I would use that on my head hair um, because it takes away any, out any chemicals. So when I say don't use shampoo free meant for your hair on your face, it's because a lot of times there's chemicals and things like that. They're not meant for the beard hair. They're meant for your head hair. With these beard washes, I would use those on my head hair. It prevents me from having to buy shampoo uh, for my head hair. It's not nearly as fragile up here as it is on the face. I also use a co-wash in the pump form like this uh, from Bad Dog Beards. And I like to use this again on my beard. It's the same thing really as this, um, just their take on it, just different brand basically. Um, but I like to use this on my head hair as well. So again, I'll use co-wash beard conditioner on my head hair, so I just don't have the expense of buying multiple products. There is also, uh, from Beard Gents and a, and a bunch of other companies, like activated charcoal bars. And activated charcoal is a natural magnet for toxins in your body. So this will help pull toxins out, anything bad, uh, out of your skin and your body. Um, it's also known to help clear up your skin. And this is another one, like Activated charcoal, I can use on my face, I can use it in my beard hair, and I can use this every single day. Um, I don't necessarily need to follow up with a co-wash, but I will follow up with a co-wash uh, maybe every other day. So talking about washing, should you wash your beard every day? It depends on your beard, your beard and your, your washing habits, your, your job. But generally, I like to say you really only need to wash your beard with a stripping wash once a week. An everyday wash... If you feel like it, you could use it every day. It's all how you feel and how your beard feels. I can go two days uh, without putting anything in my beard, just let it rinse off in the shower, not put anything in it, and still be fine. Um, but I can use a all-in-one wash every single day as well. So kind of feel it out, see how your beard feels. If it starts getting matted down and weird feeling or just greasy and thick, you're going to want to wash it with something to get some of that lightened up and, and let it the skin underneath breathe. If you're experiencing any acne under your beard, um, that could be a sign that you're putting in too much beard oil or that you're not washing your beard is nothing enough. You need to get the air up in there, let, let it breathe, and don't clog up those pores. So that's another benefit of the wash. So you have a few different styles of washing, a few different ways to co-wash. And if you have any questions, feel free to comment them below. One of these 
amazing members of the beer community or myself will answer the questions for you. And you can also hit me up on Instagram with any questions as well. I can't cover every single question in a video, but I pride myself on being very attentive uh, to the faithful followers that watch my videos and comment below, as well as message me that I can answer all of your questions and point you in the right direction. Now, the last thing I want to talk about today is combing and brushing your beard. It is a natural tendency when you start growing a beard to always be touching it, to always be, you know, pulling on it, tagging on it. I feel like if you're pulling at your beard, there's something wrong with the beard oil you're using. So it might be positive to experiment with different brands of beard oils that use different carrier oils. On the other hand, a lot of us that have desk jobs is kind of sitting there here fiddling with it because it's something new growing on our face and we're proud of it or we're happy with it or it's just something new. It puts your hands down. Every time you touch your beard, you're damaging the hair. And over time, that's really going to start causing split ends. It's going to start causing uh, some shedding that is maybe unneeded. Um, so keep your hands out of your beard. When you're combing, do not comb too often. You don't need to comb your beard uh, a million times a day. It's it's there. It's going to stay there. And every time you comb it, you're putting some damage into it. So style it after you're, you're done with your shower. Uh, we can talk, you know, different types of towels. We can talk different types of combs and brushes. And maybe we'll do that in next week's episode. But today I really wanted to bring to you the, the washing, the co-washing side of it, what you do in the shower uh, with your beard, just to clear up any of that confusion. And then building the strong foundation of just keeping your body hydrated, eating a lot of uh, protein-rich foods that have biotin, fish, steak, chicken, pork. The list goes on and on. Frogs, legs, turtles, eggs, you know, things like that. This is going to give you a good start going into week two. And you're getting towards that beard itch phase. You're putting beard oil in. Now you're kind of wondering, how do I wash it? Okay, well, here's your solution. You watch this video. Replay it a couple times if you need to. Take notes, or I'll just put it in the description. Either way. But that's going to get you off going off to the races. Now, there is different times of combs and brushes. And again, I said we'll get into that next week. But just keep in mind, every time you comb your beard, I mean, how many times do you comb your hair a day? A lot of times we style it in the morning and that's it for the day. We don't continue to sit there pulling at our head hair. We don't brush it a thousand times. Maybe sometimes we brush it a couple times a day if it gets out of control. But some of the best tools you have are with you all the time. And that's your hands. And you can shape like this. You can put your thumbs together, go down kind of like this and just kind of shape your beard like this. Um, you could throw it up in a pony if you want, if it's long enough to do that, but we're talking more to the near, new beard growers, and you just are going to let your style develop over the first few weeks. And so you're really just getting the snarls out and spreading product around with your comb and your brush. And then as your beard starts to get longer in a few weeks here, you're really going to find the style that matches your face. So I hope you guys are being patient. I hope this video helped somebody out, introduced you to some products and something new. If you learned something new, go ahead and give this a thumbs up. Give it a share to maybe somebody else that is in this journey with you and looking to grow and maintain their beard. And as always... I request comments down below because I think the interaction is part of the experience. If you want the best experience of Faithfully Bearded, you comment below, I comment back, you might get entered in to win a, uh, something out of a contest just because we're being interactive. And that builds up to the one big thing that everybody strives for in life, and that's the experience. There's a reason we grow a beard, the experience of growing a beard and, and taking care of it. There's a reason we watch YouTube videos, the experience. There's certain reasons why we like certain YouTubers over certain other ones, the experience that comes with it. There's a reason we go to Target instead of Walmart, the experience. There's so many things and there's so many different companies that I buy from solely for the experience. Experience is key, and I hope that I'm giving you a great experience with this series. So until next week, when I have some more tips, tricks, and everything in between, go ahead and hit that subscribe button, hit that bell so you know next week when the video goes off. Until then, keep growing that beard. Rub up some beard oil in there. Check out washes and co-washes. And I always say stroke your man mane, but let's just do an air stroke today so we don't put any damage in there. And God bless you all.